Mm. Sorry, just just took a nice big sip of my tank water, and now I'm ready for the TCT podcast, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be sharing some story, some stories of uh, aquatic nature. Well, hopefully aquatic nature, but you know, some I'm sure some of us will have some insane tales that have nothing to do with that. And a quick shout out to um, our two guests today, Rob and Myrtle from the Aquarium Guys. These guys are amazing. They have a great podcast. Highly recommend checking it out. Uh, we'll put a link in the description below. Great dudes. Our podcast wouldn't exist without them. So everyone pour one out for them. Not I tank water. Take, take, a, take a sip. Pour out some black water tank water to them. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So uh, since the story time has actually started on our podcast, it's uh, – we started the podcast. It's back in September. It blew up, and we're we're uh, really tickled to have all the listeners that we've had. But uh, the most requested, the most talked about, the episode that got me banned from Aquarium Co-op was Story Time. <laughs> I have been blacklisted. You can look it up on your own. It's uh, it was a it was a great episode. But Story Time is where we just get together again, tell uh, fun stories about your time in the hobby. And to kick this off, I'll, I'll talk about uh, one of my stories. So, um, again, I'm Rob Zolson. The other gentleman is uh, Myrtle Wood, otherwise known as... Uh, you can call me Dan Piazza. How, how do I put this? Before I had a small tank maintenance, I, I did a business. It was called Fish Finders Plus. I sold fish online. The whole idea was someone calls me up and... They say, I'm looking for this weird fish, and it becomes my mission, no matter the cost, to find this weird fish. And it worked pretty well, and then Amazon you know, gave it up my sweet, sweet, precious butthole and uh, gave a contract to the U.S. Postal Service, and my shipping rates went out the hole. So I can no longer be competitive, And but that is what it is. So I had tank maintenance customers. I still have a few. And one of them happened to be like those you know, purse dog ladies. You know what I'm talking about? I fucking hate those. Yeah, it's the worst. It's like, oh, come here, Cheeto, and then just put him like Arr! in the bag, and <laughs> that should be enough. Like, if I say a Karen, you think Karen. If I think, you know, fat dog purse lady, immediately you have a vision in your head, right? Overweight Chihuahua. Yep. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like he's got a deviated septum to match hers. That kind of thing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, so she gives me a call up and says, "I need your help, please." My fish are disappearing. I have no idea what to do. Well, I go to her place. She's got like a 75-gallon tank. You know, it's, it's a it's a hefty-sized tank. I go in there like, well, ma'am, you could lose a couple fish, and you're never going to know about it. You know, they'll, they'll disintegrate, that whole thing, and you're just you're just not going to see it. You're not going to see a carcass. They're just going to be gone because you didn't pay attention and all that. She's like, no, no, you don't understand. I lost half of my fish in a week. Oh, no. Like, in a span of a week, they're gone. They're just they're just fucking gone. Like, I, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, seriously. So she listed it. A bunch, it's, it's a community tank, right? Yeah. Literally mm -hmm. half of her fish gone. Like, well, what the hell? What so well, we couldn't figure it out. We, you know, I tested waters. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not extra ammonia in the system from like fish crapping out. Because even in a 75 gallon, which can handle a couple of fish dying, it, it's it's not going to work out. So we did everything we I, I thought could maybe you know something got stuck by a filter but there's no way that amount of fish disappears right mm -hmm. so we we go in and i decided you know i want to put a camera to this tank to see exactly maybe there's some activity maybe they're chasing each other maybe the fish chased each other out of the tank and jumped out and the cat ate them because she had another cat with her purse dog right that was my initial thought like <sighs> cats getting in there the fish jump out cat eats them gone it's the only thing i could explain this so i put up a camera in the corner and it was kind of up high pointing down at the entryway in aquarium and just left it there well sure as shit her fish disappeared and she calls me up oh they're gone again they're gone again like and she lost you know another close to half of her fish like poof right so i go back to the camera and look up the according and i shit you not her goddamn degenerate kids come in they're shit faced out of their minds now her kids she's old and fat so her kids are like, you know, 20 something at this time. They're all pounding yeg and just sitting there partying. Like one dude's carrying like a modern style beats pill, but it's a, it's a redneck one with duct tape. So they're sitting there partying shit faced out of their minds. And they sit there, they scoop fish out, add it to their big, you know, uh, what was it chalice of liquor and kick it back. <laughs> Yeah, all her fish has been eaten by her douchebag frat head kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I 
and I'm not kidding. It's not like, oh, let's swallow a goldfish or a minnow like you hear about online. Like, this dude chokes down a squeaker cat sedantus down his throat. <laughs> like, it's something of pure hell. If he swallowed it the wrong way, he wouldn't be here because, you know, those spines and shit. So I'm just I, sitting I was there. Say. <laughs> yeah, I'm so showing her the video and she's shitting her pants. She's like, oh my God, I'm going to beat his ass. He's going to pay for every single one of those sons of bitches. It just goes off, right? Just, and of course, that makes her wheeze more, makes her sweat more. I stand back a little bit. You never know when it's going to spontaneously combust. And then her purse dog comes in and bites my leg. So it made the <laughs> whole scene complete. But. It's a public service announcement for those listening to this fine podcast is don't eat fish, cook them first, <laughs> slice them, they're sushi, sashimi, don't don't choke down a sedantus. Boy, that boy, it's not gonna be good. Can you imagine the next morning the sons of bitches going like, What the fuck happened last night? I'm in a <laughs> lawn wearing a fireman's helmet and for some reason my stomach's real off today. But no, that's my story. Bro. This man just throws up in his toilet and he sees fish swimming around in it. <laughs> just a chunk of Oscar scales. Like, what the fuck? Puke biotope. He just what? has a fucking live quarry swimming in the toilet bowl. I just don't know what's going to happen. But again, I, thanks for having me on, guys. It's a lot of fun. Um, I have to talk, though. Y'all got to quit bitching about colorful fish, flower horns, or hazard <laughs> koi. All right. Y'all sons of bitches need to just, you know, shut up for a little bit. I mean, who hates koi? They're like the puppy dogs, right? They'll come up to you. You can pet them. We all them, hate uh, koi. Yeah, it's just, uh, I it's heard that. Killed my soul. We need to just hate on the correct fish, and that's endlers, right? Those are fear guts. Oh, fuck endlers. Yeah, I'm yeah, with fuck, you. Yeah, fuck endlers. Yeah. See? Dilly dilly. But I don't know, man. This guy comes on our podcast, and he's telling us to cut out half our content. <laughs> All right, I think we drew straws. Whose turn was it next? You know, here I'll, I'll I'll just chip in with a little anecdote about koi and why I hate koi so much. So, um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, this was not a great story, but it's, it's actually kind of a, a disturbing story. Um, but you know, I, I worked in the the you know fish industry, did everything saltwater, freshwater, but I, I did a lot with koi ponds, koi pond installation, maintenance, usually the equipment side things. Again, I, I don't give a shit about fancy koi or the names or the patterns, but one thing I've had to deal with is koi disease and, you know, just the protocols and treatments for that. Um, <clears throat> koi get herpes. Um, <laughs> koi herpes is disgusting. It's about as gross as it sounds to get these nasty, pussy, oozy sores. And it's viral. Wait, wait. This is from the people that drink tank water? I just want to confirm. <laughs> uh, yes, but we don't drink. We don't own koi, so we don't drink koi water. So we know oh, thank God. Yeah. Thank um, God. I have. I have caught fish TB from Neon Tetras from drinking their water, but uh... <laughs> and, Andy's had it. So, um, it, it's it's a na it's a nasty disease, and and the, the truth is, um, there there's some topical treatments, but you know, if you have a infected batch of koi, there, there's no cure. Um, so you know, this is about you know, eight or nine years ago. But... Lies. You get a Brevo from your pharmacy, no. and then you shame them for two weeks. <laughs> Like you would any other person in college. Uh, what, what the koi do in the privacy of their own tubs is none of my business. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to do what needs to be done. And that is euthanize, euthanize a ton of koi. So I, I put about, they're juvenile koi, so they're about two or three inches long. So I put about, this is, I'm new to the fish business. Yeah. Um, I put about 10 of them in a giant koi bag. So imagine like a 30 gallon, you know, big trash bag. And I, there's no water in there. And I took it uh, to the back. I was inside. And I smashed it against the wall. Because quite frankly, if you've ever had a euthanized fish, it's the fastest way to go. Uh, the bag exploded. Um, it covered me head to toe in koi entrails, koi blood, koi eyeballs. Covered the entire back wall with koi entrails, koi blood, and koi eyeballs. And covered the entire ceiling with koi entrails, koi blood, and koi eyeballs. And I was pulling it out of my mouth. Um, it was in my eyes. It was awful. And that is why I hate koi. Or one of the many. So what you're saying is greatest fab of all time. Um, <laughs> not for the koi. <laughs> so moral of the story, um, just just you know, you, you, you can learn from this. You know, you, if you're if you're not learning from your mistakes, you know, you know what what are you doing? 
Um, when you do need yeah. to mass euthanize a bunch of diseased herpes ridden koi, please double, <laughs> triple back. Um, please think of the fish. It's not ethical to freeze koi. It, it's a very hard, painful way to go. Um, but when smash Don't reenact the Final Destination movies when you're trying to euthanize koi. I mean, that's a simple one right there. It was, I think it was more like Saw. I don't know, man. But it was it was grizzly. Koi doesn't taste good. It kind of has a metally metally taste. It's not it's not a good fish. Um, Do you want to play that, a game? I mean, if you got to uh, take remind me not to drink from any cups at your place. No shit. <laughs> no shit. All right, I, to I, add on to that, right, a little spinoff story. So doing the podcast, I've been trying to branch out to other sources that not necessarily are in our normal fish circle. So I've been reaching out to the Minnesota DNR. We have the largest, uh, to my knowledge, largest DNR in the nation because we have so many lakes. Huh. And the resources here and the amount of detail they go into is pretty, pretty crazy. So what was it 2000, I think 18 or 17, I can't quite remember. They had um, some goldfish that were released into a natural waterway, right? And the gold, uh, the goldfish, well, I, I guess I'm skipping the story. This natural waterway in July had thousands of native carp just wash ashore. Thousands. They couldn't understand why. Just carp, no other fish. It was a monumental crisis of seeing all these giant dead fish rotting and stinking on the shores. So they didn't Man, know what to do. you're getting me worked up right now. Right. They didn't know what to do. The DNR did a mass investigation and found um, carcass of goldfish in the tank that tested positive for carp herpes. And it wiped out all carp species throughout the entire waterway, top to bottom. Not a single uh, thing was done after the electric audit. And they're actually now using this horrible koi herpes that you spe uh, speak of to control populations of um, Eurasian carp. Oh. I love hearing You're success stories like these. Right. So you say it tastes like metal and was sticky and gooey. Other people say, hey, we can finally make our waterways clean again. We so you know, yin and yang. Weaponized herpes. <laughs> Weaponized herpes. That's what I'm oh, On the podcast, we have, um, we have an old proverb. Would that all koi have but one gill raker, so we may crush it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We just huff prime at our podcast. That's what we do. Oh, we we just we Short usually lines, just like youthful bait. We just talk about the yeah. future. So I, I feel like that's leading like... into another story. Whose turn is it? I think it's Oscar's. It's Oscar's. Turn. My turn. Well, my turn is going to be an aquarium story. Oh. I have for you the story of how I almost died. Um. So. Wait, which time? Oh, this is the third time. But this that is the one worst time. When time. your aunt grabbed your chubby cheeks and thought you were so cute. Oh no, that time was the time she almost died. Um, but so I, I'm a scuba diver, as you all may know. Uh, I talk about it on the podcast a lot, and I was doing my advanced open water cer certification. Funk, you've done that, right? Uh, no, I'm just open water. I, I think uh, especially dive certifications are pointless and stupid. Okay, well, fair That's enough. A conversation for a different time. I didn't think it was pointless and stupid. <laughs> He's going to be on a movie. Hey, Oscar, that time you almost died, it was pointless and stupid. <laughs> Words of fuck. Um, so me and my three buddies drive down, and we drive down to the Kingston area. And if you've ever been there, it's on the St. Lawrence River, and it's basically green and as deep as – it's just fucking deep and green. It's the most disgusting water you've ever seen. So we arrive, and some of the locals are saying, hi, we're, we're eating at a, a little Italian place. Some of the locals are talking to us and like, oh, what brings you to Kingston? We're like, oh, yeah, we're going scuba diving here. And they look at us like we just said something ridiculous. And that's the first moment I realized this wasn't going to end well. Um, so then they throw us all in this tiny little boat, and we get brought out. And we had to do four dives over two days which is already just annoying as shit because this water is so cold and disgusting. This is this this water was like, like 2 degrees Celsius. This shit was freezing. So we do our first dive, and I start having ear problems. And if you're new to scuba diving, as you descend, you got to equalize the pressure in your ear, usually by um, breathing out in certain ways and while plugging your nose. Um, and this just didn't work for me. So my ear was in excruciating pain for this first 
40 foot down dive. That's fine. I'm fine with excruciating pain for that dive. And the next dive was a little bit shallower. It still hurt, but it wasn't too bad. So I was okay. So I spent the the night that night just drinking myself to a coma as I do. That's my standard state. Um, and then the next morning, <laughs> next morning I go out and they're like, okay, so today we're doing the deep dive. So for your two dives, you'll be going down 120 feet. And this is where I knew that I fucked up. So now I'm coming in hungover, my ears hurting, and I know that this doesn't end well. So I, at that point, I send some texts to my girlfriend. I love you. Text mom and dad saying, hey, you know, everything's great here. I love you guys. Just in case. Um, and then I, I start the first dive. And it is without a doubt the most painful thing I've ever experienced. My ears are fucking killing me as we go 120 feet down to this shipwreck. And this water's so deep that you can't tell which way is up and down. It's just green. Your visibility is 12 inches. So you just hold this rope and descend with that so that you don't get disoriented. So I'm just holding this rope with every go further hurting a little bit more. It takes a while. I end up losing one of my fins, but I get back up and it's okay. And then we go to the final dive. And the final dive, they tell us, you're going to go 120 feet down, but it's a drift dive. And a drift dive is where the currents carry you along, so you don't do the moving. And the problem with this is that once you're stuck in that drift, you can't just return to the surface for um, ear help. You're fucked at this point. So I start descending into this drift dive, and it's... The minute you get caught up into it, you just get brought right down to the bottom because it's this deep current and this is i've i've had ligaments in my arm snap i've torn acls this was the worst thing i've ever experienced holy shit this hurts so fucking bad my hungover ass is having his ear explode um i'm about to cry at the uh, 120 feet down being brought on by this current and as i'm going i'm just like well i'm fucking dead there's no way i'm surviving this i'm fucking huffing oxygen like it's going out of style because um I want to live. Um, And then I see this giant four foot long channel catfish. And he's just fucking looking at me as I drift away. And I look back at him and I realize like, this motherfucker is going to eat me when I die here. This fucking stupid fat channel cat is going to eat my ass right now. (laughs) So I'm looking at him and my friends ask me this a lot because my friends were just doing this dive normally. And then they look over at me and they see me just flipping off a channel catfish. They're wondering what what's wrong with you, but um, so eventually I reach the end of this dive and somehow survive. I'm almost out of air. I make it to the surface. I'm just like, please God, take me home. They bring me up onto the boat. My friends are all like, yeah, that was a pretty fun dive. Had a pretty great time. Saw some fun things. I just take off my mask and blood just starts running everywhere out of my nose and ears. And they're looking at me like, dude, we need to get you a doctor right now. Um, so my doctor was a bottle of Jack and sleeping the trip home. But yeah, that is <laughs> the story of my worst day ever. Uh, for a few months after that, I couldn't hear very well out of my right ear, but it seems to have gone normal. See, um, if, you, if you add those elements together, right? The whole, you're terrified, you, you don't do, you tell people that you love them, you flip someone off because you just think you can, you come up, blood's everywhere, is when Funk popped his first cherry. I mean, that's, that's the same story. <laughs> <laughs> love you, uh, Funk. I've actually, I actually went back there once. I went back there once just to catch a channel catfish and beat its fucking brain in. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. The best ending to uh, wait, any story. Wait, wait, guys. Guys, you hear that? I hear it. It's it's Peter calling. <laughs> <laughs> They're bad. Fuck you, Peter. They're invasive. <laughs> I can do whatever the fuck I want to them. Yeah. I, I think that. How does anyone talk makes... that? Yeah, um, I'm gonna bring right it now. back with like a shitty story, so somebody can just like I, I know whoever's after me is <laughs> gonna be better. It's not as exciting, but um. See, just think of that night at the nightclub where. You know, you have a shitty intro, and then you have to follow up a real bad act. This is this oh, is yeah, what's exactly. about to happen. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm the bad act before you, so that you guys can, you know, seem a lot funnier. Middleman. That's right. So, um, basically, I mean, really, the only thing I got is, uh, 
a small problem with eels. Um, a buddy of mine had bought me a spiny eel, uh, one of the peacock eels, and I did not have secure lighting over my uh, tank. You know, uh, they were just kind of sitting loose. And the thing about spiny eels is when they eat, they like to kind of thrash their food around a little bit. And while I was at work, uh, apparently one of them got a hold of something and knocked the light into the water. And it sat there for five, six hours, electrocuting everything in the tank. Oh, no. no. When I got home... I r realized that uh, something was wrong because there was, you know, you get that bad smell <laughs> oh, no, when the something bad goes smell. wrong in a tank. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, apparently this thing had been sitting so long, it killed every single snail in the tank. Every, you know, most of the fish, I'd say 90% of the fish. The eels were fine, by the way. Uh, the eels don't care. The water was filled with corroded copper, and it just, it stunk. Everybody had to go out in bins for a week while I drained this tank down, scooped all of the gravel and washed it. Every bit of this tank got soaked in acetone, vinegar, anything I could do to get that smell out. But for months... <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. No, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> so poor snail. I thought my phone was going off. Or <laughs> it all turned into soup. Soup. That's uh, that's a French meal. I don't recommend it. <laughs> yeah, tune into my next video where I make ramen with my fish tank water. Oh. You think that's a joke? It's not. <laughs> Here, um, I actually have, I have an anecdote, um, another fish store story that's kind of similar. Um, so my first my first fish job, I was I think I think I was a little yeah about eighteen. Um, I got a job at Petco. It wasn't just any Petco. So it was called a magnet store. It was like a saltwater specialty store. They they put me like in charge of it because I knew you know stuff about aquariums. Um, I siphoned I was siphoning tanks, you know, just doing my thing and. Um, there was a completely run decomposing sea anemone. I was siphoning it because the store was getting a walk, like a VP of procurement, VP of animal husbandry. San Diego's or Pecos base. They had like five VPs come into the store. So I'm like, oh shit, there's a dead sea anemone. So I start siphoning out. Uh, I was an okay aquarist, but I wasn't a great aquarist. I wasn't the best siphoner. And I siphoned this thing into my mouth. <laughs> and yeah. I proceeded to run over to the sink and start projectile vomiting. And I look up, and the five VPs were standing right there. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What, what creature was this, right? Uh, you said uh... Uh, uh, Condactylus sea anemone, a Haitian sea anemone. They're like $10 oh. anemones you get from the Caribbean. Uh, they don't they're, have any hosting behavior with clownfish. They're kind of shitty pets. See, th this is where the moment you, you just learned that it's also an aphrodisiac. So not only were you profusely vomiting, but you were hung like a hog in front of the CEO. <laughs> God damn right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm always at full mast whenever I see a CEO. I just really like authority. <laughs> You're fired, but call me later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well played, sir. Was, like, to my memory, it was the most vile thing I've ever put in my mouth. And this guy's eaten like dead koi, so this is before the dead koi. And comparing and con like looking back at the two, um, the anemone is far worse. Uh, dead sea hair is up there too. Dead sea hair is not one I would recommend trying. I know it's a delicacy in certain places, um, but don't ever eat a decomposing sea hair ever. So we need to have an entire episode. You know, fuck story time. We need to have an entire episode <laughs> of just funk. <laughs> eating shit. That's all we need. Uh, just, a, just, I'll a make it YouTube. Uh, the most disgusting decomposing sea animals ranked by the funk. <laughs> the funk. And each week you add one new. Like it could be a rotating podcast, like a video podcast. Each week yeah. you eat one more shitty thing. 
you know, it just keeps going and then you rate it kind of like the people on what Top Gear, how right they, their times and who did the fastest. You'd be like, what the fuck was the shittiest? You'd be like, this is a big board. Well, I'll, I, have, um, I'll have spiritual edit the video and just, just yeah. can you just have paralyzer play in the background while I rank and eat and get people to see the animals? All right, so Garibaldi, um, not as bad as the sea hair, but way worse than this. Than this yeah, Funk, what about a sea apple? Um, I actually got a story about sea apples too. Um, <laughs> Where do, where do you, what do you I think I was... a lot of stories. After you this need to know the story. That's probably why you mentioned it. So yeah. uh, sea, na- sea apples are they're a type of in Canada, and they're they're really beautiful animals. They, they filter feed, um, have beautiful colors. Um, they they have a reputation. The, the hobby, though, but you know when you when you search them or if you look them up, um, you know it says expert only, expert only, very difficult animals to care for. Um, and the reason for that is they um, are reported to release a very potent toxin when they die. So. Um, we i used to go to la and i got tons of stories about that but you know you go to la that's where the supply chain of, of all wild collected marine fish lands um so you go up to la and you can basically handpick all your own livestock and they get some weird shit stuff that you just can't find anywhere else um if you go look at live aquarium divers den look at all that wild oddball stuff that's all hand collected from quality marine some of the other 104 distributors um, so you see all kinds of cool stuff but one day i didn't go but another employee came back not knowing where they are and bought these crazy sea apples he's just like look these things are awesome they were really cheap and my boss was like no you're gonna throw them straight away like they don't go in the tanks and i was like all right i'll take one home so i took one home and they're they're filter feeding animals supposed to be actually pretty hard to keep um i kept the thing alive for like six years it was great thriving moved around the tank you know it was awesome um i had this 150 gallon tank even my dad set it up when i was in high school i had it for forever uh, first major saltwater tank, um, but you know, after about seven, eight, nine years, we just kind of we didn't get over it. But it was just so self-sufficient. We didn't change the water. We just fed it, dosed it, and tested it every now and then. It was a very cool tank. Um, well, my dad decides he wants to um, revamp the tank. You know, spend some time. So he does this huge water change. So this is the first water change the aquarium's had in a year. Fifty percent water change, like three trash cans on a hundred fifty gallon tank. Um, about 10 minutes after he did it, I go look at the tank. I was just walking past and I noticed that all my fish, and these are fish I had for 10 years, were all just on the side breathing. And I was like, whoa, what is going on? And I looked and the sea apple was just, it wasn't dead. It was just closed up, you know, like you irritated. It was usually flows like a flower and then kind of, it was just closed up like a ball. I'm like, that's odd. I'm like, all right, well, let me go, you know, grab some test kits or something. I don't know. And I, I come back like five minutes later after rummaging through the garage. Everything was dead. Every single animal in 15 minutes went from healthy and happy to completely dead. And, you know, I'm like kind of thinking, I'm like, holy fuck, it's a sea apple. We just shifted the water chemistry dramatically. And it wiped out everything. So I'm like, you know, really bummed out, devastated. There were some really cool animals in there. I had this, you know, hippo tang, which I bought from the size of a quarter. It was, you know, eight, ten inches long and all this other stuff. But I've never seen that kind of destruction from any animal ever. Like, I've had cowfish, which are all supposed to be very toxic. I've had them die and flow through tanks, and the fish next to them be completely okay. But, man, fucking sea apples are no joke. Um, and then subsequently, you know, everything died. I took it out, but the tank went from being a beautiful, thriving reef, wall-to-wall coral, to an algae-infested dump. All the corals died. And, I, you know, I just scramble, run. I run to, to Scripps Pier, which is about 15 minutes from my old house. You get free filtered salt water, so I just go and I do the biggest water change I can, I run to my old fish store, get them to, you know, like, it's like nine o'clock at night. I go, I get in, like, setting off alarms. I'm like, I'll pay for this later. And I just grab a bunch of carbon and split. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I'm trying to get What do you call like, what going on? Like, I, I called Hang my on. Like, I, gotta, I gotta go to the store. I gotta go to the store now. Like, uh, my tank's crashing. I, I, was like, I was like, I'll pay for everything later. I'll set the alarm back. And he's like, what? It's like, don't worry about it. And anyway, um, <laughs> it completely wiped out the entire aquarium in a matter of minutes. I've Fuck never, never came back to that store. I worked at that store for like eight years. Yeah, and he never came back <laughs> after that one. <laughs> for like a ten dollar bag of carbon, I, I don't know. <laughs> and like, and the, I had one fish. It was an Australian stripey chub, which is a really cool kind of oddball. Uh, it's a chub, um, cool fish. But uh, it's actually the fish is still alive. It's actually in a uh, aquarium buddy's tank of mine. So the fish is still alive after like fifteen years. Okay, that's cool. Or nah, like ten years um but yeah that's uh 
that's how I broke down the tank, and that's my little anecdote. I <laughs> Every time. Every time. <laughs> Hey, Funk, uh, I've, um, I've been trying to get a chub for years. Can you tell me how to get a chub? Huh? I've been trying to get a chub for years. Ask your mother. Did Andy just hijack our phone? Where did Andy come from? Andy just pulls up like, Hey, yo, Funk, give me your chub. <laughs> Fucking podcast hijacking. Yeah, you know, Funk, I've never seen uh, destruction on that scale uh, either. You know, except that one time you got a certain smashed guppy. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I want to hear a spiritual story. I, I wanna... have no yeah, story. I, like, I, I can I... tell depressing fish stories all day. There's fish stories I've even told you guys. I mean, I won't talk about the eel stuff. Like, oh that's my god, perfect. can we can we get something happy, something yeah. crazy oh, funny? Okay, I got a happy Someone one. Someone shitting their tank when they got drunk. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, you. So uh, I have this fish we all know and love called bratfish. And uh, what Bratfish is, is a, a, sma a stupid, ugly, smashed sword tail. Like, the ugliest the sword tail. Sure. I'll the hang on, give me a minute. Bratfish. <laughs> this ugly, like, look at that photo. This is the ugliest <laughs> fucking sword tail of all time. I did not want this fish, okay? I went to PetSmart. This is what happened. I went to PetSmart. My girlfriend at the time's working there. I'm like, can you just give me one sword tail because my mail had died? She scoops two and I'm like, I don't want this ugly fucking fish. She's like, too bad, hands me a $10 bill and says, buy it. I'm like, okay, whatever. I hated this fish. Like, I absolutely, like, the way Oscar hates Garami, I despise this fish so fucking much. Anyways, fast forward, like, I don't know, like a year or longer. I'm like, you know, I should feed my fish better. So I got some frozen Daphnia. I feed them. I come home, I, I was at my grandparents, I come home and all my sword, like half my sword tails are on the top of the tank, fat as I've ever seen a fish, just floating up there and they're like dying. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck? And I'm just poking, I'm like trying, I'm like putting them in like, uh, like I'm giving them peas, I'm trying to like put them in Epsom salts, like nothing's happening. These fish are just fucking bloated. My mystery snails pull up, they just rip them in half and start devouring them. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And then I see this stupid ass bratfish there and I'm like... I'm going to try something stupid. I grab the fish. I start massaging it. She makes a little squeak noise. I put her back in the tank. She shakes around. She swims off fine and she's still alive. All the other fish died. I have no fucking clue what happened there, but that's bratfish. <laughs> you massaged life into him. <laughs> no, the reason I did that is because, no, this is a, this is a small side story, is years and years prior, my grandparents own a house down in Mexico. And they had a hot tub. And one time in the bottom of that, I used to have a bunch of toy plastic lizards. And one time I looked in the bottom of the hot tub. My grandma's like, oh, you left one of your plastic lizards in there. I'm like, that's not one of mine. Sure enough, it's an actual lizard. My grandpa pulls it out. It looks completely dead. He gives it like joking CPR. He's like, ha ha ha. And then the thing comes back to life and runs away. So that was the inspiration for Bratfish. And hey, it worked for me too. So yeah, I've done that. Are you it a spiritual out? man? <laughs> <laughs> well, well you didn't mention about the mouth-to-mouth -mouth piece. I'm kind of interested. There was we no all are. Trout. They have very small tongues. I didn't give mouth-to-mouth to, -mouth to the sword <laughs> tail. I kind of just squeezed it, and then I went kind of... She kind of just went... <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then... <laughs> She's still alive. Wow, we, go, we go from fish killing to molestation <laughs> to... Funk's Brat first time out, you know. Brat, well, Brat, it, Brat, Brat the first time I caught herpes. Bratfish is the what reason is I defend sword tails because I everyone everyone's always like oh sword tails suck I'm like yeah but but bratfish. <laughs> Although I gotta point out that uh, that is the best excuse for getting an STD of all time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my wife didn't buy it. <laughs> it is the most elaborate bullshit I've ever heard. Like no no it's from a fish I swear. I can fish I please herpes. put my dick in you. Oh man. Babe, babe the crabs they weren't from any girl they were from the tank bro Come on. they're an endangered Fons, species up in LA? i can't i can't kill the crabs they're porcelain crabs nesting in my pubic hair they're they're native <laughs> the crabs are endangered species their natural habitat in angelina jolie's snatch is slowly getting rolled away funk are your crabs still alive uh, I've never seen him. One. I put him in and never saw him again. Uh, for disease ridden shrimp's still alive. I actually saw him today. That's cool. You killed <laughs> the crabs I sent you? You killed the endangered <laughs> German imported crabs I sent they, you? They could still no, be in there, man. I didn't, so. I, I, I didn't ask for him. You just surprised me. You just, I got Actually, I got a story. I don't think I've ever told this story. I, I, I just thought of it. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna have a. Everybody takes a turn. I'm gonna have a tally for have Everyone takes a turn. Turns into Funk's TED talk. 
<laughs> okay, you know, I'll say I'll save my story for later. All right. Now or never, buddy. Now or okay. never. Come on. Right. It's actually it's actually a very wholesome story until it's not. <laughs> I'll um, say when I only played Sarah McLaughlin so many times. <laughs> So, um, I, when I went to the fish store one day, this, uh, I believe they're Mennonites, this, this like mom, this daughter, like the most innocent, pure, like bonnet, Amish looking people that came You're in. You're thinking of Mennonite, the Smash character. Hang on. I was just about to send the me. <laughs> By the way, this YouTube video that you guys make, I cannot wait to see the like horrible spastic slideshow that happens. <laughs> it's, the best, it's the best part. Was a vessel for the slideshows, honestly. Okay, so anyway, um, they come in. The daughter wants an aquarium, so I spend a lot of time and I help them out and I help, you know, really cared and you know, got them a little like ten gallon tank, got them some endlers, um, got them some moss balls, you know, and you know, they, they actually became regular customers of mine. Like the, the daughter was just infatuated by the fish. We always like to help her out. I'd like feed all the cool big fish, like the sharks and stuff, and. You know, they, she just enjoyed it, and, you know, would always come in and talk to me and all this stuff. Well, one day, um, I was, we were looking at freshwater fish, just helping her pick out something, and I had my arm leaning on one of our tanks, and the freshwater wall's here, and the saltwater predator fish is here. And the big scary predators are at the way in, and we're at the way in, looking at the small fish, and right at the end, it's the most death-dealing aggressive fish we had. We had a 50-gallon tank with about three full-grown or you know, pretty good-sized volatile line fish in them and i'm just leaning against the tank like i always do like oh yeah that's an endler that's a congo tetra that's a blah 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 and we had eight crate on top and something spooked the volatins and one jumped and put about eight spines into my hand jesus and i instantly become paralyzed i mean just like <laughs> and i just started screaming <laughs> fucking obscenities <laughs> so Bad. I'm just there like Jesus fucking 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 Jesus God dude from this like Mennonite mom and daughter that I le le grew to like build a relationship with over six months and they were just mortified something thing me everyone knows what a lion fish is and um they still came back and talked to me and they're like were you okay? I'm sure that was really painful. I was like you fucking <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's my story. I'm done. Whoa, I have questions. I have questions. Okay. So okay. what did you do after this? Because I know in detail what this stuff does to you. So did it creep up um, your arm? Did you go see the doctor? Did you get some No. So, so what I did, like... I, I, I ran to the um, the bathroom um and i just started pouring hot water on it and i kind of grabbed i was like i was like Derek, like one of the, the other like head guys i was like, so like find, out. find something for me and you know he comes back with um what did he come back with it wasn't meat tenderizer that's what he put, i think it was like vinegar or something he was like this is all, like fine so i poured all over my arm poured all over my doesn't arm work. doesn't work i i know did, well here's here's the strange thing is i've been stung by a lot of animals it was awful pain and in about two hours, I was completely back to normal. My hand was a little puffy. I had, like, you know, a bunch of, like, little... I was, like, from here to here, like, right above where my wrist started. Like, it was puffy, but I was fine, like, an hour or two. Oh, so you're lucky. So yeah. uh, we, we got a, a regular on my podcast. His name is Adam. And he owned a pet store in northern Minnesota for many years. Mm -hmm. And Adam, I love him, but he's a dipshit at times. And <laughs> he had himself a dead uh lionfish in one of his tanks and he was cleaning didn't realize that dead ones go off just as hard as live ones do and whapped him straight in the hand now he's in northern minnesota so there's no hope for him it wasn't like a small dwarf one or anything else it clearly was much worse than yours so for those that are listening the emergency on some of those lionfish not only do you have the risk of having you know anaphylactic shock because you could be allergic to them but mm -hmm. also the biggest problem is the venom, so to speak, will follow from your extremity all the way to your heart, causing heart palpitations and failure, right? Mm -hmm. You have a lot of risk there. So basically, you got to follow how the swelling goes. So Adam, not – I don't think he knew this, but Adam not caring, hit it, had the worst pain of his life, screaming up and down, decided to not go to the doctor. He just called his fish vendor, which it happened to be my co-host in the uh, a podcast, Jim, and says, hey, man, I just got hit. And then he just says, sucks, don't it, and hangs up. <laughs> like he can't do anything for him. 
he decides to call back. You know, I got that. Let's call the whole uh, the wholesale I bought it from. Maybe they have some suggestions. So they call Seagrass Farms in Florida, and they talk to their the head sales rep, saying, "Hey, one of these stores got hit by a, a lionfish. You got any problems?" And they're going like, "Yeah, we have anti venom places around here that take care of this stuff because you know people dive and shit." Mm-hmm. Um, go see your doctor. Well, the closest doctor was three and a half hours away. He's like, well, you're effed, and they just hang up the phone. <laughs> so he decides that he's not going to close the store. He's going to, and this was in the morning, he works the entire day, and throughout the day, it goes from the tips of his fingers, follows all the way up through his elbow, all the way past his shoulder, and he cannot physically use his left arm at all. Jeez. It's just yeah, sitting there like a Gumby thing back and forth. And, you know, we're making fun of him. So did you go up to customers and be like, excuse me, sir, would you like a fish? With his, you know, <laughs> mouth numb and shit. Like, oh, my God, how retarded. He's just in there. Please, sir, man. M- can you hand me the net? I- I'm I'm kind of disabled. So <laughs> if you get whapped by one of those things, don't, and it creeps up, follow the creep. It hits your elbow, go in. It ain't, it ain't worth dealing with. You're not going to be as lucky as this uh, funk. He's clearly got... Herpes antibodies that are protecting him for life. <laughs> He's immune to all beasts of the sea. To, to be fair, I'm actually allergic to bee stings. I, I, I puffed up like a balloon, got epinephrine, did all that. Um, from what I understand, and this is kind of why I did it, is is if you hot water will help with the spread, and that's just what I did. And I, I think I got lucky. Now I've also been stung by fox face, and that shit lasts days and hurts. <laughs> it's like it's like a muscle pain. So I, you're I, the guy that gets yeah. stung by everything and tastes everything. Is that right? <laughs> I, I have, you know, um, very unfortunate luck. I mean, the odds of being bit, attacked by a shark is, you know, you say you're going to get struck by lightning twice. You know, it's more likely for that than to get bit by a shark. I've been bit by a shark like 20 times. But you oh, like, like antagonizing the sharks. I mean, they're sharks that are this yeah. big, but a shark attack's a shark attack, okay? <laughs> yeah, it still counts. Counts. Don't, don't counts. <laughs> I, I think the I, question I, is, have you been struck by lightning? Uh, I, I definitely do. My my internet karma and my karma in general, I'm definitely due for a lightning strike. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys, we, we need to take just a moment in remembering some funk. <laughs> All right, I swear to God, that's the last time we're using it. Three's the right, charm. Don't do it again. I haven't been... I don't get attacked by many fish. I've been bit by a few different bicher and walleye or stuff that I caught. But it's I. Biker, Oscar. It's what? a bitcher. Oh, it's don't be that. We've already talked about this. We've podcast. talked about this for like 20 years. It's actually from an Arabic word, Abu Bashir. Oh, so, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. That sure. Andy, where's Andy? Andy already went Andy, over this. Andy already went on. I don't yeah, want to hear it. Don't want to Both are valid, but biker sounds better. Because if you have a bunch of bikers in a tank, it's a biker game. And who doesn't want no. that? <laughs> You're gonna do, they do look like the leather straps on like some of those like 80s movies. You know what I mean? We've already established that. I sure sounds so nice. It sounds like a Thai massage shop with happy endings. We've already established this. We've, we've, My this was, word is we're, we're rehashing old material. Yeah, this was agreed upon. I, I haven't been bit by many fish, but I did get bit by a toe biter once. Well, uh, Bella day. They're kind of like these big water bugs. Yeah, they're awesome. And I've been bit by a lot of insects because I, worked with the department of entomology for a long time and i had to set up a tank that was for these kind of aquatic bellastom insects and we fed them feeder goldfish and they're disgusting revolting animals i if they, i could kill them all i would um actually as some as an entomologist if i could kill every single insect i would <laughs> i don't care if i lose my job but um so one day this, I'm in this. I'm looking at the Bellastome tank, and we had recently fed them a goldfish, and it's lying at the bottom. It's dead because they kind of insert their pincer and they kind of suck shit out or whatever. And um, so I, I wanted to clean up this uh, this goldfish cadaver. So I reach in, and I'm kind of distracted. It's already closed hours, so there's no one inside. And I lift him out, and I, as I'm taking him out, one of these things latches onto my arm with his tiny little claws and bites me. And this thing's about six inches long, and it hurts like a son of a bitch. So as a rational thinking man, the first thing I do is smack him against the aquarium glass and yell, CUNT! <laughs> 
And then I look behind me and I see my um, 80 year old professor who I've been working with for many years. I see the, de- the curator of entomology, the department head. I see the vice president of the museum all there looking at the displays to see how everything went today. And so I'm just looking at them. My arm's in excruciating pain. I dropped a C-bomb on all of them. And um, at this point, I'm just like, hey. And then I run to the bathroom. Um, no, no. You need to replay that. So if you had like that pause button you saw in the uh, was it the Adam Sandler movie click, you hit pause, <laughs> rewind it, and then be like, they look at you like, what? And you'd be like, I'm British. We say it a lot. And then just run to the bathroom. <laughs> If I could have a rewind button, I would have fucking bleached that entire tank and killed every one of those godless beings. I hate insects. <laughs> we should call this uh, bitten uh, the instant Tourette's bitten by a creature. Guys, what have we learned today? Insects suck. Insects suck. Do we go through everybody? Did everybody get a turn? I, yeah, I got just... one more if we if we can find Andy. <laughs> All right, well, well I'll do one more. Yeah. So uh, I was uh, how do I how do I describe the story? In Minnesota, we have a thing called tubing. Now, there's two forms of tubing. There is the tubing where you take a giant industrialized intertube, pull it behind a high powered boat, and you scream like you're you're going to be 120 feet down in the ocean and your eyes are bleeding. Um, so as you're going on doing that tubing, not the tubing I'm talking about, I'm talking about river tubing where you take an inner tube, float down the river, listen to Jack Johnson, pop a beer, you know, that relaxing tubing. We're sitting there tubing on a a local river in Minnesota and we think that we're alone. Normally it's quite, quite alone, but it is again, the 4th of July weekend. So me and my wife are out there enjoying the air and suddenly we come across this group of people, right? The group of people are seeming to be from a distance are all adults, but there is one kid there. And the kid somewhere around that 12 year old mark, you know, like that teen preteen stage. You know what I mean? Um, Just old enough to probably not or young enough to not be there, but old enough where he definitely can swim just fine in the whole deal. So all the rest of the adults are absolutely shit faced. They have three coolers and they're probably, you know, 70 percent of the way through all three. They are out of their minds or taking their tops off, you know, all kinds of the heinous goodies. And the kid is, you could just tell he's bored out of his mind. He doesn't want to be by these people. I'm assuming they're family. Let's hope. And me and my wife, you know, we're, we're trying to have a good time and on our own. And these people are being obnoxious. We're just groups on rivers, you know, generally because they're, they're all connected with like a cord or something go slower because, you know, one of the 12 people are going to kick the bottom and slow down the tube ride. So me and my wife are just trying to flow past them as soon as we can. And as we're going down the river, this kid seems to find a turtle as a little painted turtle that you find in the river. And the kid's like, hey, mom, look what I got. And they're just kind of ignoring him. So then he takes the turtle and it's holding it. Right. And he's pretending to like face fuck the turtle. Like he just grabs the turtle. (laughs) He like air humps it, you know, kind of like making the thing on his tube. (laughs) Where he's like rocking back and forth, just going ha ha ha, and the the I'm gonna call them parents, but the adults tubing all look over like ha ha, he's trying to face fuck a turtle, ha ha ha, and I, they keep going back and forth, and as this is happening, I'm looking over like God, could I not be here right now, in front of these people, and as that moment, as I as I thought those words in my brain. He has these, you know, normal, like, colorful swimming trunks. But apparently on the front, they have, like, a Velcro spot. And the Velcro pops open. His penis dangles out. And the turtle reaches out, clamps down on the head of his dick. He's just sitting there. (laughs) So I don't know if you guys seen, uh, uh, what is it, Dumb and Dumber? Seen that show? Yeah. So his dick, you know. He's a preteen. You know, there's nothing to comment about, right? Kind of reminds me of that scene on Dumb and Dumber where the guy sticks his tongue to the frozen pipe and then pulls it back and forth and stretches the shit out of it. That's kind of what he did with the turtle, just pulling it away from his body, screaming. And all these adults there are, you know, intoxicated out of their mind. Just, 
going off, just laughing. Oh, he face fucked the turtle, all right, and just losing it. Where I'm thinking, holy crap, this is the worst Jewish circumcision of all, uh, circumcision of all time, <laughs> hands down. They're not thinking of the kid. He's going to be like, it, his dick is going to be missing the head of it. You know, turtles got sharp mouths. So the kid's screaming back and forth. I'm like, what do I do if I go over and help? It's weird. If I don't help, it's really awkward. So I'm trying to like slowly pedal over, like hinting, like, please help him before I do. So one of the adults finally goes over there. The turtle releases. Yeah, he's got a little blood and they kind of just get off the shore there and go take care of it. But, oh, man. You want to talk about awkward is tubing with drunk people you don't know, seeing a child getting his penis bitten by a turtle. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say right. that sums it up. Yeah. So, the whale, uh, please. Say that again. You know, uh, I was going to make a moil joke, but uh, you know, you were asking me about um, any interesting things I've seen in the uh, pool industry, and you know, one did come to mind. It's just kind of a short anecdote. Uh, but I had picked up a client and given it to another one of our technicians. And he was there uh, cleaning the pool. And the homeowner ran out to stop him. And she was very upset. She didn't speak a lick of English. Uh, and she reached into his net and she pulled out a live crayfish. And apparently there were two more in the water. And they had been living in there for up to a week in five parts per million chlorine so nice. um, if ever you're wondering about the hardiness of uh invertebrates uh crayfish can certainly handle it to an extent there's nothing sad the crayfish they're fucking in the pool it's a fun time you know that's just you know how you want to spend saturday nights funk you got a pool right uh my parents do I okay go chuck some uh, crayfish in there they won't mind yeah, there you go. And then drink it because now it's it's now suddenly aquarium water. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for having uh, me and and uh, no. Mr. Pizza. Thank on. you. I, I don't want to ever talk about his last name because it's so delicious and I'm on a diet. But <laughs> if you guys want more debauchery, we uh, have fun on the Aquarium Guys podcast, aquariumguys.com. We have a uh, fun community in the bottom of the website. We have our Discord. Actually, that's where we're recording this they wanted to come to to my house because i didn't shit on the rug so uh again thank you for having me on guys that's uh quite a nice and uh you got anything to say there mr pizza yeah you know you guys are all right uh wish you the best of luck with your podcast um uh, thanks for having us on despite all of our um shortcomings and asperger's oh know? trust oh. trust don't me, forget our shortcomings you know who you're talking worse. to right <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and don't don't forget to the listeners of the the, the tank uh, community or the community tank podcast here on the bottom uh, in the show notes if you're listening on YouTube or the, the the show notes on the podcast there should be a link in this in the show notes for uh, um, all of Funk's STDs from fish. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, be sure to donate. It's a long list. It's a in, PDF. You know, in the YouTube video, they'll just scroll across the screen. <laughs> And definitely, if you are interested in talking to us in person, join the um, in person. TCT or Aquarium Guys Discords listed in the bottom and shoot us a message. Give us new podcast topics. Um, and if you yell wanna... random obscenities at us. <laughs> if you want to hang out with me in real life, come to my house. Address in the description. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that was that's pretty fucking funny. I don't know what else to say. Thanks, guys. Thank you so yeah. much. Thanks so much Thanks for being for, on here. 